Okay, we're rolling. Hey, everybody. So, James and Tammy, my British supply. Love my pubs. Look at my pretty wife. We're going to go out and eat with our... He's done something real wrong <laughs> if he's saying I'm pretty. There's, he's he's yeah. bought something. I know he has. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I'm fixing to go buy you dinner with our daughter and boyfriend. That's what I'm fixing to do, which I'm looking forward to. My anyway. Boyfriend? My boyfriend? No, your boyfriend. Oh, okay. I don't buy anything okay. with your damn boyfriend. That's my poor man. Sure it is. Okay, so enough of that rubbish. Here we go. So, questions here recently. Beautiful. Oh, can you tell me what to expect from a female lilac and tan married to a moral tan male? Not bad that. So, so, so we know this. We know that half the lid is going to be lilac and tan, and what? the. No, we're going to. He said a moral, a lilac and tan female, solid. Yes, lilac to, and tan. To a tan male. To, oh, a mer to, to a moral, a moral tan male. Oh, a moral tan male. Half the pu puppies are going to be morals. Half the puppies so are going to be morals. Is is he just a what well, color? All we is know he? is he's tan. That's all we know. Just so we tan. know. So we know he's. So we know this. We know that he's not a brindle because it's a tan dog. We know that the other one's not brindle because it's a lilac and tan, and it wouldn't be tan points if it had brindle. So no brindles. So you're going to get a litter of half fawns and a half meryl fawns. All carry blue or carry chocolate or carry a copy ten points. All right. It's cloudy today. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of conflicting information about the pie gene uh, and that mention of Irish pied carrying only one copy of pied when bred to a non carrier. Well, if it's Irish pied and carries one copy, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. No, no. no look, it, every dog that's a pied to, that I have ever seen. Well, the first thing is pied is a recessive gene. You've got to have two copies. You've got to have one yeah. from each parent. One yeah. from mum, one from dad. The dog has to be test SS pied. Otherwise, you're not getting any pieds. Mm -hmm. Now, an, uh, tell us about an Irish pied. What's an Irish pied? Oh, he looks like he's got a little jacket on and his sleeves are pushed up. Because he's, he's white from here down, usually. He's got a ring around his neck. Beautiful if they have the blaze. Right. And he's just solid on the back like a little blanket thrown on him. Right. So, so like Rumble, our dog Rumble. Yeah, Isn't Rumble. It? Yeah. How do you get that? It's I don't so know. Pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. I guess to get it reliably, you probably breed an Irish pie to an Irish pie. I don't have an answer on that. Do you? I mean, I really don't know. I always think pies and merles are like a surprise in every package. Yeah, I kinda. think you're just lucky when you get one. Yeah, kind of. I don't know. Somebody don't, let us know. Yeah, right. So how do you get an Irish pie? Tell us if we're wrong. Yeah, that's a, that's a question. We love that. Yeah, we do. So, all right, what we're saying is this. To get a pied, you've got to have two pied carriers or two pied parents. The puppy has to have two cops of pied. Otherwise, it's not going to be any kind of a pied, let alone an Irish pied. It's going to get rough right up here. Okay. We made so watch yeah. um, camera. Do you breed micros? Micros is just really a small Frenchie. Right. You get lucky if you get a small one. I what, love small ones. Let me see. What, what, do you, what do you call them? Well, the little here? female you, I've got, she's, what, seven months old, and she might weigh 12 pounds. She's a little bit. Yes. So, so thank what do you, you, Debbie. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Hip, yeah. hip Debbie. Yeah, thank, Debbie's made from the UK. I finally got her home. She's God, wonderful. It took forever to get this dog here. <sighs> it took five months. And a lot of money to get her and here. And a lot of money. No <laughs> kidding. Uh, not more than what, what, what no, I was used to spend it. No, not Debbie's fault at all. No, Beautiful little puppy. No. So anyway, back on this she micro thing. To me, a micro would be a puppy, a dog fully grown is going to be something like 16 pounds or less. I'd call that a micro. But look, other people may say differently. I mean, you do see some Frenchies as small as 12 pounds fully grown. That's a small Frenchie. So my advice to you, number one, would be if you've got a puppy that's 12 pounds fully grown, I would not be breeding that dog. That's not... So, so the question here was, do you breed micros? So the, if you want, if you are calling a micro a 12 pound dog, no, I don't recommend that. I think that's, you know, if you're gonna breed a micro, you better be breeding a micro to a micro and hope that you don't have too big a litter because it could end up, you know, being full of puppies. So, Hang on to that. yeah, there go. okay. So, so the answer is, yeah, we try to breed small dogs. We like small Frenchies, don't we? Oh yes, especially right. our boys. Yes. So we have some very small stud dogs, Dior, Picasso, Zahampalot, Clooney, Hercules. These are all mm. sub 20 pound dogs. Don't forget Bazinga. And Bazinga, who's not quite ready yet, but Bazinga, <laughs> right, exactly. Bazinga! Yeah. All right, enough on that one. Uh, uh, James, I'm gonna tell oh, a funny story. James spelled his name as Bazinga on our paperwork. Oh. I could have killed him. It's Bazinga. As in 
as in uh, um, and he always thinks he's right so he thought he had it right how try this one thank you for this tutorial but instead of sperm I use my own Get that conversation real I quick. use my own because it's way easier now I can finally see what a human dog hybrid looks like <laughs> I have to say, say that again? What I'm not going to repeat it. I'm not going to repeat it because it's nasty. Oh, okay. Someone being stupid. Oh, somebody's asking about, they saw our, our fluffy, full fluffy boy Denali. When are you planning on breeding this handsome fella? I would absolutely love to get a puppy from him. Well, we have bred him, but not to one of our dogs. He's been bred three times now to other people's dogs. So there will be hopefully some beautiful Denali fluffy puppies or fluffy carriers going to be here in a bit. But we are still waiting for our fluffy girl to do anything before we're breeding and we don't know which fluffy we're going to use. So the answer is we're not going to have anything. We have two fluffy boys. We've got two fluffy boys. We've got Denali and we've got uh, Wolfie. Wolfie. And uh, both beautiful boys. So Thank you, Andrew. Yes, thank you, Andrew. So we're looking at at least another and thank you, Terry. four months at the very minimum before there's any chance of us having any fluffies. Um, I bred a blue, this is Joe's Jose. Um, that last one, by the way, was from T Tatiana's Schism, so I should be telling you who these are from. I have a blue brindle and I have a lilac carries blue. Should I breed them? Well, the first thing is, when you say you have a lilac carries blue, that's kind of a, um, a misnomer there. A, a lilac is a blue dog, so I'm going to assume that you have a lilac dog. That is a blue dog. And if you have a blue brindle, then what are you going to get? Well, the answer is, is that you'll get all blue dogs, and if the lilac does not have brindle, we know that the other dog does, then half the litter is going to be blue brindles, the other half is going to be blue. Since it's a lilac parent, all the dogs will also carry chocolate. Let me make it clear. A lilac dog is blue, is chocolate. Doesn't carry it. Right. It, it is, is blue, it is chocolate. That's what makes it a lilac. Yes, exactly. Um, so Jennifer Mim says, I love you all. Crack me up. So much knowledge wrapped up in two great personalities. Well, that's <laughs> nice, isn't it? <laughs> A thumbs up there to yeah. Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, my Frenchie's tent, this is 20 hours ago from Sylvia. This one we should have answered immediately. My Frenchie tent was 89.9 this morning. Checked her around noon and it's 99.4. What do you recommend that I oh, do? I thought you said 89. I was like, what? No, no, it was okay. eight, eight, yeah, eight, eight, um, yeah, she means 98 points. Yeah. She yeah. means 98 points. Yeah. So, so what should you do? Well, the answer is we don't have all the information we'd like to have here. This is a dog that either one of two things is going on. Either you didn't stick the thermometer up in there far enough and you've not got a true, you got a low reading, which does happen. But she did get a reading of 99.4, which makes me suspect that she is getting it in there properly. So what you see is these variations in temperature. What we're looking for is a temperature below 99. And guess what? 98.9 would be less than less than that. So that's a dog that you'd expect to have puppies within. Yeah, there's sometimes they'll run 99 for three or four days. So do the temperature twice. Yes. Morning and evening. And then that yes. way you know exactly when you catch it dropping right. at 98. So if this dog is at 61 days from AI, if this dog's not eating food, if this dog is panting and nesting, you need to go to the vet. Absolutely, yes. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. If this dog had a temperature that was 98.9, then it's not doing any of the other stuff. It's eating food, it's just acting completely normally, hanging there and waiting. Oh, here's a nice one from Holly Epi Epiga. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. Oh, we lost my phone. Oh, there's your phone it. behind. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get it. We couldn't find the we phone. Couldn't find her we phone. use it as a prop. Oh, well, it'll go away, so yeah. ignore that. I ordered a large incubator today. This is Holly Epiga for our English Bulldog that are due at the end of the month. Nicest one I've seen so far. Well, thank you. We, we are proud of our incubators. We've got big and smalls. They work great. We have got many, many hundreds of people using Once them. Once you have one, you think, how did I ever live without it? Yeah, that was cool. Oh, it's really good. Uh, okay. Hi, this is from uh, Cur del Rio. Uh, Cur del Rio. My Hang fawn. Hang on to this when I take off. Yeah. Well, not right now. So. My fawn and sable have merle markings on face only. Are they considered fawn merles and sable merles? Thank you. Their two brothers are blue merle and tan. The dame is a fawn merle carrier. <laughs> Okay, well, it's a bit conflicting here. Merle Carrier. Yeah, well, I know. Exactly. Can't be a Merle Carrier. Yeah, carrier. there you it's go. A so that was the yeah. conflicting thing. Exactly. Hang on to that. That's the yeah. conflicting part. The conflicting part is what is a Merle Carrier? There's no such thing as a Merle Carrier. So, Merles, I mean, Merles are always, if you did it right, have a single copy, well, a have minute. a single copy of Merle. Or a cryptic Merle. Well, we'll talk about yeah, that in a second. Yeah. 
but yeah. a single copy of Merle makes for a Merle dog. And two copies of Merle particularly can have all disastrous consequences. You can have deaf and blind dogs. You don't mm -hmm. breed a Merle to a Merle for that reason. And so a litter of Merles typically is half Merles and half not Merles. Mm -hmm. The not Merles have got nothing to do with Merle at all. They don't have a Merle gene. They are not mm -hmm. Merles. They, they're not they didn't carriers. Get they didn't get it. So all the dogs that are Merle, you could consider those to be Merle carriers if you want. Now, Camille's talked about cryptic Merle. So you can have a dog that doesn't look Merle, but tests Merle. And that is what's called a cryptic Merle. I don't mean a cream dog, that's a different thing. A cream dog will not show the Merle because cream covers everything. But a dog that's a regular color that tests for Merle but doesn't show it is a cryptic Merle. You can breed supposedly a cryptic Merle to a Merle and you almost all the time get away with it. But I don't have any specific information on that because we've never done it, nor would we. Um, no. Right, but anyway, so the, so the answer Trouble. is your two girls that have Merle on their faces, those are Merles. Yeah. I mean, a Merle dog can have hardly any Merle showing at all. It's well, still like a Merle. Well, like our Platinum Merle, you don't see the Merle because the cream covers it. That's a slightly different situation, yeah. but yes. But that's... I mean, it hides it. Yes, right. Um, okay. Uh, this is Wo Kimbazal. Kinsabi. Whoa, Kinsabi. Whoa, Kinsabi. <laughs> hey, whoa, Kinsabi. Mm, Kinsabi. Um, okay, Lone Ranger speaking here. Yeah. Kinsabi. I'm currently working a five day old puppy and switched to formula because mum wasn't producing milk for him. He's getting pretty backed up on bowel movements. What should I do? And also, I have been stimulating him to potty because mum doesn't do that either. Okay. So, we've got a number of things going on here. The first thing is, is you've got a puppy that's constipated and that can get to a hard stomach and the puppy may stop eating and can get in trouble. So you're going to have to do something about this. And this, so I don't know if you know about this. And they tummy. don't feel good. Yeah. yeah, enemas? Yes. Yes, never done it, haven't had to do it. But the consensus here is, is you take a syringe full of warm water and you just gently blow that up his butt. Just like when you have babies. Yep, just gently blow up his butt and that'll get him to yeah. poop. And Human babies, two-legged yep. babies. Yep, and I, I've also read some things that it, it's actually go get a cup of water, uh -oh. put a few drops of. Uh, I don't know. Doesn't look like it, does it? Maybe we've got some else to eat. Um, put a few drops of dishwasher soap in the water, and that can help kind of slippery up the whole thing. So, uh, so that's one thing. Now you've got a mum that's not producing milk. Well, that gets to be a problem. So, yep, you're going to have to be on mummy patrol here. Until her milk hopefully comes back in and I would let the puppy still be with mum and nurse on mum otherwise mum will milk will not come in at all so um, you're gonna have to do that as well I'll go read it. yeah okay um, um, okay we're just checking our restaurant we're gonna go eat um, all right next question Uh, Jude Cal end. I don't normally answer these questions that are kind of negative, but I'm going to bring this one up. I think I decided after watching this video, I'm not having my dog bred. That is forced breeding, and I just don't think it's right. I know others will disagree, but I don't think it's very comfortable for her. Okay. Well, look, um, we don't... Windblown. <sighs> yeah, we... It's just natural. We care about our dogs. We don't breed dogs, and we don't, you know, you kind of acting like this is rape you know it's not rape this dog is ready to be bred and if you put this dog with another dog it would get it would attempt to be bred and so we're just stepping in and taking control of the process because it's a lot more reliable with French Bulldogs I'm sorry you feel that way and I'm sad that you're not going to have puppies but you've got to do whatever your conscience tells you to do but I can tell you this from our point of view we are never ever cruel to our dogs, we care about our dogs, we do the best we can for our dogs, and for other people who have dogs who come to us, and anybody who wants advice, we do all of this because we care about dogs, right? Mm -hmm. It's our primary mover. I mean, obviously there's money involved in this. They're but your the, babies. But exactly, and yeah. so you know, whenever somebody's breeding one of our dogs, there's a conversation we have about this. There is a small but potential risk of breeding dogs, and uh, that doesn't mean that the, the risk here is we're gonna do some mental trauma to the dog, because that's not what's gonna happen here. Okay, enough on that. So. Thanks for the comment, and uh, we kind of slightly disagree. Um, how much are your platinum females? Well, the answer to this is anytime we don't discuss the price call, on YouTube. Call us. Call us. I'm going to try go, get my phone. Go to our webpage. Um, you have to wait for a few seconds. We're always okay. done with this because we're all 40 minutes. Okay. Just give them a bit more. Uh, somebody says here best, most informative French bulldog insemination. Uh, thank you. Have we ever used the Draminsky ovulation detector? Yes. Sold it. Didn't like it. Thought it was a piece of rubbish. 
This is the thing that has a black handle with a wand on it that you stick up the dog and you look for readings and you look for a drop in readings to supposedly tell you when the dog's ovulating. I've practiced on James. It didn't work. Couldn't keep it didn't still. work so I threw it away. Yeah. No, it's a piece of rubbish. <laughs> Don't use it. I mean, people in the are going to hate me saying that. I think it's rubbish. I will use it. It's Somebody too unreliable. Somebody take that serious. Yeah, seriously. No. Yeah. What, if you combined blue and white, what would be the color of the puppies? What? Uh, if you can, com well, I think what they're talking about here is if you bred a blue dog to a cream dog, what would be the color of the puppies? Well, well blue do and white. Do your DNA. <laughs> yeah. No, do your DNA. Blue and white stripes like a zebra. DNA. Okay. So here's the deal. Look, a cream dog has every color under the sun or none underneath that coat. You cannot see it. So the blue dog is blue. If you put a blue dog with a dog that carries blue genes, you get half blues. If you put a blue dog with a dog that carries lot, both blue genes, you get blue dogs every time. The cream dog, we don't know anything about that dog. We have no idea what other colors it's got. Like Tammy says, it's got a DNA, or no thing about the parents. And that is and animal genetics. Yeah, animalgenetics.com, Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. Get your DNA test. In about 10 days. Worth every penny to find out what the DNA is, Kay then you Baker, know what you're dealing with. Yes. Kay Baker asks, I have a question. I breed boxes. My last litter, we had one boy with a cleft. If I breed again to the same male and a female, are the chances high that I will get another cleft? So, well, the first question would be, how many puppies did you have in that litter? And if you had, let's like, say, for instance, if you had eight puppies and you had one cleft, I think you probably got unlucky. Yeah. If you had eight puppies and half of them were clefts, then you know that that's absolutely certainly hereditary condition. You don't want to breed those two dogs together again. So what's our advice? Well, uh, typically if you have great outcomes, we say do it again. If, if it's, you know, if it, the adage is if it's not bust, don't fix it. But if you have a problem, no, I'd go to a different dog. No, I wouldn't push it personally. So, you know, there's a, we just don't know the answer to this. We occasionally see a cleft palate we don't see it very often. I suspect in those instances, it's probably not genetics that's going on, but just don't repeat breedings that don't work out right. That's our advice to that. And one last question here, because we're already running 17 minutes. Oh, uh, so um, Lucy asks, what do I get if I have a fawn pied with one parent that was brindle, and I happen to breed to a fawn pied with a brindle male, what do I get? I'm not sure quite she's asking you. Is her dog brindle? Well, too, I have a pied? fawn pied with one pen that was brindle. Okay, and okay. That, that's irrelevant, a, isn't it? The, yeah, she needs to do DNA to see if she got yeah. the brindle. But the fawn pied does not have brindle because it's a fawn. So oh, the, okay, fawn pied. So the yeah, fawn pied with one pair of brindle, brindle. we yeah. can ignore that. That okay. is not a brindle dog. Bred to a fawn pied with a brindle male. Half and half, right? I happen to breed fawn, oh, the fawn pied with a brindle male. What do I get? Yes. Half brindle, half not. If the other dog carries a copy of Pied, half of them will be Pied. They'll all be Pied? No. I thought she said both parents were Brindle. No, with a Brindle male. Ah, okay. So listen to the question, Brindle Sorry. male. So the Brindle male that is not Pied, if he carries Pied, you've got a Pied with a half Pied, you get a litter of half Pieds. If the, if the male doesn't carry Pied, you get no Pieds, you get half Brindles and half Fawns. Hey, I think we've gone on long enough, plus we've got to go and eat some food. So, from Tammy and James, it's... Love my pups, L-O-V-E-M-Y-P-U-P-S. We have puppies on there to look at. You do. And then there's uh, MyBreederSupply.com. My supply. With some great products that if you're not using, yeah. you should. Yeah. Be safe. And how many studs have we got? Lots of them. If you've got a Frenchie and you want a, and you want a stud dog, we might be the person for that too. And we're certainly here to help anybody. So mm -hmm. if you've got questions on any of this stuff, we answer lots and lots of phone calls for people who are not even getting anything from us. And that's absolutely fine. So if we can help you, we're here for you. Take a peek at our babies. They're sure pretty. They are. Bye everybody. Bye.